Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm delighted to say that joining me on the programme today is Alexander Hoveng, who is the Chief Technology Officer of Sandvine. Hello, Alexander. Very good to see you. Thanks so much for taking part in our programme today. Now, service providers, you know, they're facing ever tighter financial constraints and the need to increase efficiency and reduce their OPEX is more important than ever. So how can a better understanding of network and application data help them? Yeah, and because operators are so focused on margins at the moment, and they're still profitable, we're still looking at 30 to 40% EBITDA percentages across most of the operators for their, for their core telco business. And um, how can you compete? Well, the only way you, you, the only measures that you really have are, are making sure that you're you're keeping your churn under control. You do not want to lose any subscribers, and then you want to make sure that you're spending the opex and capex dollars that you have or euros um, in the absolutely best way that's going to make a difference for the business. And in order to do those three things, churn, opex, and capex, um, you have to understand the the experience that the, your subscribers. Are, are having on your network. Are they happy? Are they unhappy? And if so, if they're unhappy, what are they unhappy with? And then on CapEx and OpEx, cap, starting with CapEx, how do you spend your CapEx dollars at the right time in the right place? Because if you're wasting CapEx, that's going to be immediately um, hurting you on your bottom line. And on the OpEx side, what's really costing you? It's inbound calls to customer care, it's, it's payroll, it's power, it's uh, things like that. And you have to be able to, to reduce your operational costs, optimize your business, make sure that people are not calling in. And if they are calling in, that those calls are really quick and easy and have a good conclusion. Um, and I, we just, at Samway, we just don't think that you could run a business in an optimal way, profitably, um, without understanding the um, experience that people are having when they're using their apps, um, when they're using Netflix or Zoom or, or whatever it is, what are they feeling? Is it good or is it bad? And if you're just looking at volumetrics and simple KPIs um, in a fixed network or in a mobile network, how do you go from there to saying, yeah, my customers are happy when they're using their apps? We think that's a gap and then we're trying to, to, to address. Now, if I can move the conversation on slightly and look at security, because security continues to be a major concern, and rightly so. So what's your view of the current cybersecurity threat, and what can you do in terms of data insights to protect network traffic? Yeah, I think telcos, in terms of serving the consumers or even serving the enterprises, has not done much when it comes to security. And that's maybe one of the few places where you can monetize uh, services and maybe get a little bit of, of top line growth because consumers are concerned about security. So enterprises are concerned about security and um, people that understand security understand that security is not a one solution that solves all security issues. It's you, you go at it with a layered approach. Um, and one of those layers can be the network. So having an in network security play as a opt-in or opt-out or a revenue growth opportunity or or maybe even just to make sure that you keep your subscribers happy uh, as a churn preventer or maybe as a way of of reducing operational costs because if you have a lot of your subscribers actually infected with trojans they're going to wreak havoc on your network which is going to cost you both opex and capex so you're incentivized as an operator today to do something about it. And one of the things you can do is an in-network threat mitigation solution. Look for threats as they're going on the wire and take them out. It will cost you very little to do that and you'll get happier customers. And it's not gonna stop every possible security threat uh, on the planet um, because a lot of it will go uh, over USB sticks or email or attachments that, that in the network protection is not gonna, gonna solve. That's where you need on-device protection. And some operators are, are 
coupling their services with on device protection, getting antivirus and stuff onto the phones and the and the laptops and bundling that into the service. That's also, I think, a good idea. But think about it as a as a layered approach. Take the stuff out at the network level if you, if you can, because that's cheap and, and efficient, and then do a layered approach with additional protection on on device and, and in the cloud. Now, network traffic isn't as simple as it once was, and one of the developments we're seeing at the moment is a rise in the number of so-called super apps, those apps that offer a large number of services, all with different traffic profiles and requirements. What potential issues could these apps cause? So if we go back to, to what I said about like the three big ones, make sure that your customers are happy so that they don't churn. Make sure you're spending your CapEx and OpEx dollars where it needs to be spent and no more than you need to. How do you know if a customer is happy? Um, well, one way is to try to understand the experience they have when using applications. And in order to do that, you have to understand what the apps are doing. Because if I'm on Netflix and I'm, I'm actually playing a game on Netflix or I'm doing a download or I'm streaming a video, those three things will have very different requirements on the network. And there's a very big difference between uh, a voice call in WhatsApp, a message in WhatsApp, and a file transfer in, in WhatsApp. So these super apps, um, if you want to call them that, that have many different functions built in, you need to understand what, how, how the subscriber's experience is using each one of those functions. Uh, and then map that to, oh, is it working well? Is it making the subscriber happy? Or is it not working well and potentially leading them to, to churn? And finally, Alexander, let's come back to this idea of the, you know, the happy customer or the requirement for the happy customer. As CSPs continue to transform into DSPs and tech codes, the range of data traffic and workloads is, is increasing, is going to keep increasing. So how can these service providers best position themselves to maintain a strong quality of experience both now and in the coming years? Well, I think what we've talked about already uh, on understanding whether subscribers are happy so that they don't churn and taking actions when they're unhappy proactively to make sure that they, they stay with you and, and CapEx planning in, in a smart way as, as well as OpEx reductions in a smart way. All of these things are hard. They're super important because they're kind of the only thing that's gonna, it's gonna keep you competitive compared, compared to, to other operators. Um, in that sphere of how do I keep my customers super happy so that they don't leave? How do I spend CapEx and OpEx in the right way? It's hard. It takes lots of different data sources. It takes data science teams and machine learning and NPS surveys and correlation, because otherwise you're ch chasing issues in the network that may not yield any difference uh, in your bottom line. If you're just looking at metrics I don't know, signal to noise ratios or little little KPIs here and there, and something is red and you chase after it and you do a program around and you spend time and effort fixing it, maybe it didn't do anything to make the customers more happy. Maybe there was something they were really unhappy about and you completely missed it because you didn't have the right tools. But that balance, understanding that landscape is hard. So you have to invest in getting good data in analyzing that data for your constituents and your consumers, um, figuring out what actions actually yield a good result to your business. And that doesn't happen in, in three months. That, that operators struggle with this on a yearly basis. They run three to five year projects and, and trying to, to improve aspects of this. But it starts with really, really good data, understanding whether the, what makes the customer happy or unhappy, and how am I going to spend my money? And the sooner operators embrace that with effort and, and build teams around this, the better they're going to be off in the future because that, that's the fight they're in. Well, unfortunately, we must leave it there. Alexander, it has been great talking with you and thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.